Hey guys, just wanted to make a quick little video about uh, explaining the counter in Hammer because I get a lot of questions every day about how to counter the hammer and everything and I just want to make a quick video about it because I think it's a very misunderstood thing and I think a lot of people do it wrong, especially a lot of beginners and I think it's because they just don't understand the physics behind a counter. <clears throat> so, let's get into it. So, first things off the bat to establish a counter there are three things you need to have one is tension in the hammer and the wire two long arms three a really strong posterior train which means your back glutes and hammies and calves this whole backside of your um of your body and and uh, sorry, there's four things. And the fourth thing is an extremely strong core. Hammer throwers tend to have the strongest cores out of all the throwing events and some of the strongest cores on the planet. And those are very important because a lot of people, when they think of the, when they think of the counter and pushing, they kind of go hand in hand. You need to push and counter. It you need the counter to push because the counter helps you push. All right. And I think a lot of people just think, oh, push. So you just kind of just do it with your right hand. Like you kind of just like push the hammer that way with your right hand. And I think that's a very, very um, fatal flaw because one, you, sh you shouldn't just push with your hand because when you think about it, if you just smack someone with your hand, you know, that's not very powerful, but when you smack it with your whole body, like if you ever see like those Russian, like, um, like the Russian, like professional slapping fight people or something, you notice that they use their entire body to smack their hand. So they use their entire right side. that's right handed rather than just their hand and their arm. So you want to think first for pushing your entire right side is working together. So that's why you see a lot of hammer throwers do like bar twists and a lot of core exercises where their their hands are out, but they use their entire right side as one unit. And that's what you want to think about for pushing. But the other thing that helps you push, because it's you, the body is just naturally weak going side to side, you know. Your hammies are a lot stronger than your IT bands and stuff like that. You know, uh, you can back squat more than you can like side lunge. <laughs> and the reason for that is just because your body biomechanically is a lot stronger backwards and forwards than sh left to right. All right. So when you think about it like that, <clears throat> you can start to understand the counter and the push going hand to hand because when you counter... It helps you push because you want to think about for the counter, like walking backwards. So you want to think about sitting back. All right. So it's not pulling this left shoulder uh, back or anything. It's about you're sitting this entire right side. So here, so you notice here, right here, how as the hammer goes up, he goes down and sits his whole body against it. So you notice his arms are still long, but the but the backside, his posterior chain, is moving backwards. All right, and that's very important because you want to feel like you're walking backwards. So a good way to feel this, if you don't feel it throwing hammer, is grab like a sled or something really heavy to pull across like the floor, and just sit back. Like you're sitting in like a quarter squat or a little b above a parallel squat. And you just sit against it and kind of walk backwards with your heels. All right. While, while pulling it against the ground. All right. And then you'll start to feel what, um, what you, it should feel like. And you should feel tremendous pressure in your core and your glutes and your hammies and your back. All right. And not really that, and a lot of hand pressure, but you shouldn't feel that much in your shoulders or anything because your your legs and your back are doing most of the work, all right? 
And the reason why the counter and the, the push go hand in hand is because the counter helps you push. It makes it a lot easier. Because when you think about it, so think about what happens to the hammer when you sit back. All right? So when you sit back, it decreases the radius of the hammer. All right? When you decrease the radius of the hammer, it speeds up a lot. You notice that things are very, when you're super, super long, it does travel further. All right? But it doesn't really go very fast. All right? But when you bring it in, when you bring something in that's very far away from you, it speeds up dramatically. All right? So the important key for hammer in the field is, is that when this is down, you're going backwards. All right? When the hammer is going down, you see how he's sitting back? And then as it, as it goes up, he's sitting back while staying long. All right? So it's very important... <clears throat> That you want to try and feel your body going back as the hammer's going forward. So you don't want to go back and then the hammer goes back with you. You still want the hammer to stay long. And that creates a tremendous amount of force and a tremendous amount of stretch. And keeps and builds, builds, builds tension through the throw. Alright, through the wire. Alright, you always want this hammer to have constant tension on it. Because that's what... That's what creates the speed. All right. So you notice from here to there. So let me just play this in regular motion. So you notice how there's a tremendous speed up in the hammer whenever it goes down. Whenever he catches with the right foot and goes down. All right. So that's something you really want to pay attention to in hammer. So basically, the general rules for the counter and hammer is you never go side to side. It's always front, back, front, back. All right? It's always front, back, front, back. So as the hammer's back, his body's going forward. As the hammer's forward, his body's going back. All right? And you can really see it in a lot in with, with hammer throwers when they wind. So you notice how the ha hammer's going back in his wind, and he's going forward. All right? The hammer is going back. Oh, uh, let me go to his first wand. So you notice here, hammer back. So he's forward. And then when the hammer starts to go in front of him, he sits back. All right. And then the same thing here. And again, as you go through the throw, as you keep progressing through your turns, you have to counter even more and more. And that really speeds up and speeds up the hammer even more the more you counter. Alright. So that's something you really need to pay attention to as a thrower. Another thing that helps with pushing and countering. Is you notice so him. So Igor here. I'm not even going to attempt to say his last name. Um, you'll notice that he doesn't move his feet. That he's constantly pushing the hammer and he's letting the hammer pass them. And then his feet only pick up when they go to 90. The important thing is when you hear people say like move the hammer, push the hammer. You have to do that while staying grounded. If you turn with the hammer, that's slow. Because you want your hammer to be moving faster than your body. So if your body is moving faster than the hammer, you can't push it. Now you're just turning with it and you're going to probably pull this left shoulder. Which is... One, going to change your orbit, so you'll throw at a wrong angle. You'll probably hit the floor. You'll probably have a lot of shoulder pain in your left shoulder. And a lot more blisters and calluses in your left hand. Alright, so that's another thing too. But you still use your left side, but you want to use it in a good way. Alright, and that's something for another video. But I just really wanted to go over how to counter and push a hammer. Because the counter and the push go hand in hand. You can't push a hammer without having a counter. Sorry, a counter. I don't know why I just suddenly had a southern twang there. But, um, so that's something to really keep in mind. And there are drills and stuff to do this that you can look up. But it's very important. You tend to see a lot of hammer throwers have super, super strong backs, glutes, and hammies. Because that's what you really need. Because that's the stability you need. Alright, and they do a lot of, like, um, 
uh, anti-rotational exercise and a lot of counterbalance stuff in the weight room. Like uh, they'll have a cable and they'll just like sit back against it and stuff like that for like special strength training. And whenever they do core, they they never have their arms close to the, to their body. It's always out in front, and they do a lot of twisting motions and stuff. All right, so that's something to keep in mind. You need to find a way for your upper body to be disconnected from your lower body. You're when when you're when you're turning, I should say. You should never think about turning. You should think about just moving the hammer and sitting back constantly. All right. And staying grounded for as long as possible. So basically, you don't want to think about your feet moving. Your feet will just move naturally because the hammer just turns you. All right? So you want the hammer to turn you, not you turn the hammer. All right? And as long as you keep sitting back against it and keep having your right side push across. And I should say, uh, not across, but out and around. You always want to think about having this hammer go out. So out and away from you. The further away the hammer is from you, the faster and more powerful and more tension it will go. The hard part is countering that. All right. So you need to build your way up. Not, like A lot of people cannot counter the forces that he has right here. Because right here, he's at 84. I know this is a training throw, so he's not going that fast. But a lot of people cannot hold this kind of tension. All right, I'm I'm bet I bet my life that this throw went about like 75 plus meters here. All right, like 70, like at least 70 plus. And the throw with that kind of tension in the hammer, like you cannot throw 70 plus meters with a weak block and a weak push. All right, it's actually it's impossible. All right, so it's something to keep in mind because you tend to see people like. Oh, I can get away with this and this and this. You can't get away with much in hammer. Not really at all. So that's something to keep in mind. And um, hammer throwers tend to have a lot stronger cores than everyone else. That for, Than all the other throwing events. You do need strong cores for all the throwing events. But hammer especially is probably one of the most important things. Because one, a strong core keeps your back healthy. And if you throw out your back... And hammer, you're screwed. But I guess that's the same in all the other events, but especially in hammer. Because if you have a weak back, you're done. You can't counter. There's no way you can. So that's something to keep in mind. But hope you guys learned something about countering and all that and uh, pushing. So to sum up this long video, basically the key points are one, keep the hammer away as far away from you as possible. Two, when the hammer is forward, you sit back. When the hammer is up, you sit back. Basically, when the hammer is in front of you, you're sitting back. All right? And then as the hammer gets higher, you get lower. All right? And then as the hammer gets lower, you get higher. You don't want to go up and down. All right? But... That's just the way you counter. Because if you were to raise here, when the hammer's high, you would lose your counter and it would pull you onto your toes. Alright? If you ever feel like you're on your toes, except that, you know, if you're doing like a toe turn, if you're a four turner, uh, on your first turn, that's the only time you should ever be on your turn, uh, on your toes. Otherwise, be on your heels. The second you lose tension, and you can feel it because if you start to turn on your the balls of your feet, you're doing something wrong. All right, and it can be a, a lot of things, but generally it's usually because you lose your counter. All right, so you want, as the ball gets high, you get low. All right, as the ball gets low, you get high. All right, and then you always want to feel constant tension in your back and the wire. All right, all right, and then one of the more final points is the hammer moves you. You do not move the hammer. So do not turn with the hammer. The hammer will just turn you. you the you turning is a byproduct of the hammer moving fast. All right. If you ever feel like the hammer and you are moving at the same speed, that's it looks very pretty on film and all that, but it it doesn't go anywhere. All right. The most important thing, even if you have kind of ugly technique, 
generally ugly technique might go further just because maybe it's ugly because you produce a lot of force you know like you'll i tend to think that the bet the definition of the best technique is the technique that goes the furthest and it's all dependent on the individual because maybe not in hammer because hammer you kind of have to do the same thing as everyone else does there isn't very many like uh individual things like there are individual quirks but generally besides like the winds in the first turn everyone basically turns and finishes the same in hammer compared to like shot put and discus and jav so it's more of a unified technique but yeah that's that's basically my two cents and the last thing i would say is basically try and have fun with hammer the worst thing you can do in sports in general and in life is just overcomplicate everything all right because i know i just threw a lot of things about like but when you start to think about how your body moves in relation to what you're throwing and and when you start bringing like physics and stuff and and biomechanics into your throw you can start to understand a lot more about the throw and this kind of stuff will also allow you to throw a lot easier all right because it will put a lot more stress on your body but on your whole body all right rather than just like your arms or your shoulders or something so you'll it will reduce the risk for injury a lot more as well when you do technique properly and you allow physics and momentum and a whole bunch of other like concepts and stuff help you throw because it will just help one reduce injuries and two make you throw further all right so that's something you got to keep in mind when you're when you do sports and especially throwing so yeah hope you guys learn something and have fun uh see you guys in the next videos